Hey, how's it going, everyone? My name is Derek Afasi. I'm the owner of Afasi Financial Group and RetireSharp.com. Today's topic, I want to go in depth uh, regarding an IRA rollover from 401k plan and fully explain that. Um, so, you know, first off, what exactly is a 401k and then what is an IRA and then why is that important when someone's either hitting a specific attained age, they sever employment, um, or they're just, you know, ready to retire how can they utilize this 401k plan, the monies that they've already accumulated in a 401k plan, to properly structure it into a specifically designed IRA account that's going to benefit their goal throughout retirement? Um, so, you know, please make sure to take down notes at any point in time whenever you have questions or if you find value in this video, feel free to call our 1-800 number. It's 1-800-566-1002. I'll be sure to and just basically reference this video when calling in. We'll make sure that, you know, we'll have uh, one of our specialists give you a call back and, uh, you know, discuss this in more detail for your specific situation. So a 401k is an employer-sponsored retirement plan. What that means is when a worker when an employee is is essentially working for a private institution, uh, they may be offered, you know, at at inception, they may be offered, okay, this is your salary, these are, you know, your different uh, benefits package, uh, you know, your health insurance, disability insurance, different ancillary benefits, and oh, by the way, you could also uh, contribute monies from your salary into a type of retirement account. Uh, known as a 401k plan. So the way on how this works is I want you to think of this 401k like a bucket. The way on how this bucket grows, just like an IRA, goes by a very simple formula. It goes by contributions and rate of return equals what your account balance is, your account value is at the end of the day, at the end of the year. So on one side, you have a contribution that's going into this account and on the other side, you have the rate of return that's going into this, or that, that's basically accruing within this account. So a really simple concept to contribute monies into a 401k plan is more along the lines of out of sight, out of mind. So if, let's say, somebody's making $100,000 with a specific employer, and they say, hey, I want to put 5% away every single year from my paycheck um, you know, into my 401k plan, it's as if they're only making $95,000 that year because $5,000 is basically being pre-tax is, be, is being contributed to this 401k plan so they have five thousand dollars that's going into a contribution this example to help you know fund further further this 401k account um, now a way on how the employer will try to incentivize somebody to stay there as opposed to you know get uh you know, go over to a new company that might be offering them one hundred and two thousand dollars as an annual salary as an example what they'll do is they'll say, hey, we're going to give you matching money into this 401k plan. So, you know, maybe the match is up to 3%. So what this tells us is if this person is putting in 5%, $5,000 into the plan, the company, the employer, would be placing $3,000 into the plan. If, let's say, this person is placing $3,000 into the plan, the employer is going to be placing $3,000 into the plan. Let's say if this person is placing $1,000 into the plan, which is only 1%, the employer is only going to be placing $1,000 into the plan. So, you know, the match is essentially, it's, it's free money. So that's why anytime that somebody is, you know, if they're nearing retirement and they're really trying to accumulate their monies, uh, understand that they could add further contributions into a 401k plan above the age of 50 than when you're below the age of 50. So it's something known as catch-up contributions that you could place into this plan. Um, now, let's say if this person is, is nearing that retirement and they either hit an attained age, such as an age 60, or the, um, the 401k company, the custodian that was basically housing the 401k changed, or this person severs employment, that now qualifies them to take this bucket and roll it over into an individual retirement account that could be designed for their retirement benefit. It'd be structured, it'd be more properly structured for their retirement benefit. What exactly do I mean by that? And what is ultimately the negative to a 401k? Why individuals don't typically don't just leave it in their 401k forever? Um, and why they would make that transition from a 401k to an IRA rollover? And this is due to the other side of the coin, you know, the other side of that, that, that formula, essentially. So you have the contribution side, and then you have this rate of return side. Well, this rate of return side is based upon the different investment options that a person can choose within their account. So typically a 401k plan will give you right around 10 to 25 different options to choose from. So think of these options as different eggs in your basket. 
So, you know, majority of times they're not the highest quality. Uh, sometimes they might be very expensive. Um, and ultimately, there's only so much juice that that person could squeeze out of these options. So with an IRA account, an individual, what determines their rate of return or different, you know, related benefits could be anywhere between, you know, a thousand to three thousand different options, different eggs in your basket to choose from. For, from a purely a growth perspective, rather than be handcuffed into something that only has a few options, they could go and, and have a whole multitude of, uh, of different, you know, variations of allocations of things that could really grow their accounts at a, at a maximized basis. So when somebody stops working for an employer, that match, and this is a large misconception, that match is going to stop. Or let's say if somebody had monies in an old 401k account and now they were working for a new employer, rather than take that old 401k and roll it over into the new or transfer it into the new 401k plan, they are now eligible to take the monies and roll it over into a specifically designed IRA account that now has those multitude of options, those more eggs in their basket to choose from to try to grow their accounts much as, as much as possible. The old 401k plan is not growing by an additional match money. The match is only there when you're working for the company, when you're working for that employer. Um, so you know, be mindful. The match is only when you're adding contributions. That's the only time that that match is going to come in there. And the, typically it's necessary to place whatever it is, you know, whatever the match money is and, and, and uh, you know, up to. So if you go and let's say somebody has a 5% match within their 401k account, it makes sense to go and place that 5% in there because those are free monies. You're getting 100% return on the, the, the contributions. If you're adding in you know, $5,000 in that example, you're going to get an extra $5,000 from the employer. So now you have $10,000 working in your account that could now you know, uh, further with the power of compound interest based upon how well your investments, uh, your investments do. So we understand the benefits of the 401k account are it's kind of forces you to be out of sight, out of mind. If you're taking monies and rather than it coming in from your paycheck, you're basically placing them aside into your accounts. Well, it's forcing you to save for that retirement. So that's obviously a good thing. Another good thing is the matching money that you would get from that specific employer, which is fine. So you're able to control this. So you're controlling the controllables. You're controlling that contribution side that's going into your account. When, let's say, your investments that are tied to this 401k, if these investments are positive for that day for that year, well, then that's going to add a positive into your bucket. When these investments come back negative, it's going to be equivalent to someone taking a sword and slicing your bucket. So as an example, 2008 market crash, average portfolios lost anywhere between 37% you know, to upwards of 50, 60%, depending upon how aggressive they were in their investment related options. So that's a large hit, especially when someone's nearing retirement. And let's say they had a million dollars in their 401k account and they take a 30% hit. Well, that's a $300,000 hit in just that one year. So even when they're coming in the next year and the, the market's trying to you know, creep back up, well, those, those new rates of return are creeping up on a much smaller number. In that example, 700000 So let's say if the market lost 30% the first year, then it gained 30% the second year, that's not going to be back to break even. It's still going to be 30% of a gain on 700000 not you know 30% of gain on the original million. So that's where you know heart, uh, um, losses can hurt far worse than gains can help you, especially throughout retirement. Um, so with this sort of concept, we want to make sure if somebody is eligible for this 401k to go and do a rollover, that they're making sure that they're placing it in, they're designing it into what their you know what their goals are, what is things that are most important to them uh, from now until you know that 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 ultimate retirement date, and then from retirement date already you know all the way till until date of death. So once again, the most important negative to, to be mindful of is, you know, limited funding options. So with an IRA account, um, it, it, that formula grows by that same sort of concept. It goes by contributions that you're placing into the plan, and then it goes by rate of return. I'm filming this video in 2020, and the contribution limitations for a traditional IRA in 2020 is if somebody's under the age of 50, they could only add $6,000 of a contribution into their traditional IRA. If they're above the age of 50, well, then they could only add $7,000 of those catch-up contributions into their IRA account. 
um, with a 401. So that's, you know, obviously if someone's trying to play catch up with their, with their retirement savings, this could really, you know, limit their, you know, their contribution catch up or their, their contributions into this sort of plan. With a 401k, it's slightly different. The most that they could place in if they're under the age of 50 is 19,500. If they're playing catch up contribution, the most that they could place into that, you know, specific account would be $26,000 in a given year. So obviously it would give them much higher contribution limits than an IRA. So another misconception is somebody thinks, okay, well, you know, I could only add up to $6,000. I could only roll over up to $6,000 or $7,000 per year from my 401k into an IRA. And that's not the case. Basically, when somebody severs employment, they're eligible to take the monies from the 401k and roll that over into an IRA. They could do that on a limited basis. So let's say if this 401k account is sitting at a million dollars, and this person severed employment, or they're eligible to go and, and have access to these monies to go and customize their accounts more specifically towards their retirement need, they could go and roll over so that if we kind of think of that same you know contribution rate of return bucket, this is the IRA, even if the IRA has not been opened yet, and it's just basically sitting at zero dollars, they could go and that contribution would be the rollover. So it's keeping it from, in this example, a qualified, we're using a traditional 401k into a traditional IRA. It's keeping it from a qualified retirement account to a qualified retirement account. So that first year's contribution would be the million dollars. And now this rate of return or the different customization that you could do to 401k, it's our two IRAs. Um, you know, would give you all those different eggs in your basket to choose from. So obviously the very beginning of this video, I'm just talking about from purely an accumulation perspective, but understand that IRAs, when I'm using the word customizable or they're, they're customized, what do I mean by that? And how, you know, how exactly can you leverage an IRA for your specific retirement uh, income needs or retirement situation, retirement goals? And this is where the three things scenario comes in. So I explain this in a lot of videos and I say, and it's just a really simple, you know, easy to remember, not really formula, but just concept that there's three things that every individual needs to figure out before they're retired or if they're currently retired, how to stay retired forever. The first thing is income. The second thing is emergencies. And then the third thing is growth slash inflation protection. So to take a step back, financial planning as a whole, you have two main aspects to it. You have a wealth accumulation stage, and then you have a wealth preservation and distribution stage. Wealth accumulation means that you're trying to accumulate your wealth. You're trying to accumulate your dollars. So, you know, the main goal when you're looking at this contribution and rate of return side, when somebody's working and let's say they're in their, you know, their 20s, their 30s, their 40s, they're trying to maximize this contribution and maximize this rate of return as much as possible to get this bucket nice and fat. So there's specific allocation strategies to try to accumulate those dollars best way possible. Well, right when they start nearing, you know, late 40s, early 50s, late 50s, early 60s, now rather than take on that risk of the rate of return side, of let's say being you know, super aggressive and having things that ha could have high risk, high return, what they'll do is they'll start scaling this back and they'll say, hey, I wanna preserve my accounts, not take as many dips in the market, and then make sure that I have a proper distribution strategy in play. So for the individual that let's say is age 60, and they say, I wanna retire at age 65, I'm eligible, I have an old 401k account that's sitting there. My current employer plan is allowing me to go and take monies from my four, from my new 401k account and roll over those monies. And you know, at age 65, I have specific goals that, for, so I'm currently age 60, I wanna retire at age 65. How exactly can I do this successfully uh, based upon what my expenses are and uh, making sure that I can have more than enough income to live off of for the rest of my life or mine and my spouse's life. I wanna make sure I have income is, uh, is protected. So I have, uh, you know, as I'm no longer working at age 65, I need to make sure that my income is greater than or equal to my expenses. I wanna make sure that I have some sort of emergency fund available. And I wanna make sure that all the monies that I don't have to use for step one and step two are growing at the, you know, the greatest potential rate of return, uh, you know, based upon my risk tolerance to keep up with the pace of inflation. So with that really simple concept, let's break down each step because basically by understanding this or kind of figuring out the three things scenario, you're able to retire with, with, with confidence. 
and you're able to use the smallest amount of dollars and only as much as necessary on step one and step two. And the ultimate goal is to have as much money in ancillary buckets and growth related buckets and fund monies as much as possible in that, you know, so basically maximize that step three, but making sure that you're covering your bases, you have your safety net in steps one and two. So I just created a hypothetical situation. I'm going to go line by line of each, and I apologize for any of the sloppy handwriting. Basically, if let's say we have an individual that is uh, currently age 60, and they have an old 401k account, they never actually rolled that over. Let's say they have an old 401k account from their previous employer, sitting around 200000 they have a current 401k account with their current employer sitting at 500000 but they're eligible for a rollover because they hit some sort of age-based in-service uh, in service, uh, rollover withdrawal. This is 500000 Let's say that they have $100,000 sitting in a Roth IRA account. They have $100,000 sitting in a non-qualified brokerage account. They have $50,000 sitting in a savings slash checking account. They have annual expenses of $70,000 and they want to incorporate this expense they said that this expense is going to stay there until they're age 65, right Right throughout retirement, um, is going to be that $70,000 marker. And starting at age 65, their ideal retirement date, they're going to also be receiving Social Security income. This person does not have any pensions, or say no pension. They don't have any rental properties or any other cash flow that's basically coming in there. And they want to try to properly retire. So if we're going through the three thing scenario, we're leveraging 401k to IRA rollovers, what might be a decent route or what might be you know, a good hypothetical situation to make sure that they're keeping as much money in their pocket and they're leveraging, leveraging the correct strategies and the correct accounts and products um, you know, as much as possible. So we know that, once again, the three things scenario, we have income as step one, emergency in step two, and growth in step three. We want to use the smallest amount of dollars and only as much as necessary in step one and step two. So we have the bulk of the dollars sitting over in step three and their fund monies. The way on how to accomplish this income-related need is to figure out what are the expenses. Well, we know that the expenses here are $70,000. So we need greater than or equal to $70,000 when this person is no longer working. They're no longer you know, bringing in that additional paycheck. So what are some of their guaranteed income sources that they're receiving? Well, we understand that at age 65, this person is going to be receiving $30,000. So this tells us that their guaranteed income stream is going to be $30,000 giving us a gap. So we want to figure out what the gap is of $40,000. This person does not have any pension monies. So usually that could help fill in you know, what the gap is. So there's no pension monies. And there's also no rental monies because you know, depend upon how well that the person is controlling their rental income. Uh, that could obviously that could also be a, um, you know, another cash flow that would be coming in there. So a typical solution in this situation is to create a customized IRA that will produce this income stream for 40,000 using the smallest amount of dollars and only as much as necessary. So this would be considered IRA number one. And typically it would be leveraged through an insurance company and an annuity product line to produce you know, the income necessary. So you're leveraging your age and you're leveraging the dollar amount to produce some sort of guaranteed cash flow that would be coming to you know that individual year by year by year, month by month by month, to suffice what that what that expense need is. So out of this, we understand that the different accounts the person can leverage is two hundred thousand from the old four hundred one k, five hundred thousand from the current four hundred one k that they are eligible to roll over, uh, either a hundred thousand from the Roth, a hundred thousand from the non qualified brokerage account, fifty thousand from savings. So these are the different assets that basically somebody could go and and, and you know play with to see, okay, what's the smallest amount of dollars out of these assets and only as much as necessary to accomplish this need. Um, so in this scenario, let's say that out of this person has a five-year deferral, so it'd be looking at what customized IRA account, in particular with an insurance company, that somebody could place in monies today, wait, defer it five years, and get, receive that $40,000 of income. So maybe out of this example, it's going to come out to, you know, the magic number is going to be $300,000. So this tells us that where this person could leverage these monies, if they're using an you know an IRA, a traditional IRA, they use two hundred thousand from the old four hundred one k and a hundred thousand from this current four hundred one k to accomplish this IRA number one at three hundred thousand. So in this example, this person still now has four hundred thousand sitting in the traditional IRA, 
never touched the Roth IRA out of 100000 never touched the non-qualified brokerage account of 100000 still has the savings checking of $50,000, and we know at age 65 they will have greater than or equal to the dollar amount that they need to accomplish this $70,000 goal. So I hope that this first portion makes sense because by just using the game of leverage and arbitraging your situation, you could go and use larger companies, customize your IRA accounts. So you're not just saying, oh, hey, I'm you know sitting in an investment related strategy. I'm sitting in a wealth accumulation strategy currently with my 401k. Let me just go and roll it over into another wealth accumulation strategy. No, there's a reason. There, there's, there's a purpose for that growth need. But we don't have to accomplish that growth need just yet. We want to make sure to cover the basis first. So this goes to IRA number one would be sitting at 300000 And what's the purpose of IRA number one is to sit into this account for five years and then provide that, that sort of lifetime income stream, that cash flow for the $40,000 gap. So now as I clean this up a little bit, the existing 401k would now be sitting at 400000 you leverage 300000 from the old 401k and the newer 401k to create that IRA number one. This IRA number one is necessary because it's going to produce $40,000 of cash flow plus $30,000 of the Social Security income, which will accomplish your step one need of what's, equal to, what's greater than or equal to what your expenses are you know, for that specific year in retirement. Uh, now this moves us on to step two. So you still have the 401k money sitting at 400000 the Roth IRA money that you never touched sitting at 100000 and the checking savings account that's sitting at $50,000. So with this concept, emergency funds, rule of thumb is that somebody wants to see about anywhere between 6 to 12 months of what their expenses are into something that is, is liquid cash, so something that they could pull from at any time. Um, this is sitting at 50000 so unless somebody you know did not feel comfortable and they wanted to really get to that seventy thousand dollar expense need, what they could also do is leverage. Let's say I have this four hundred thousand of the four hundred one k. We know that fifty thousand dollars sitting in the checking the savings account. If they go and maybe take twenty thousand dollars and just sit it into a money market IRA account. That doesn't really, you know, you're just basically parking it in there, kind of, you know, equivalent to a savings account, but it's something that you could pull from on liquid cash to just get you to that $70,000, you know, expense need for that 12 months of, of expenses just to hit that rule of thumb. It really just depends upon a case by case basis, but this would be IRA number two. IRA number one, you know, sat into that, uh, that annuity related uh, account that had the income rider. That was IRA number one. IRA number two in this example is sitting into an IRA money market account. And now it brings us on to uh, you know, step three. So use the smallest amount of dollars and only as much as necessary for your step one. The smallest amount of dollars and only as much as necessary, necessary for your step two. And now you have, you know, this new number would be $380,000 sitting in the 401k, $100,000 sitting in the Roth IRA. $50,000 still sitting in the checking the savings. You still have monies that, God forbid, if you pass away in the IRA number one, whatever you don't use up from cash flow would be going to beneficiaries. And then obviously whatever you don't use up in this IRA number two would be going to beneficiaries as well. So you're still maintaining control of your accounts along the way as they're growing. And actually, as I just went through that second example, when I cleared the screen, I forgot to include this non-qualified brokerage account, which I mentioned in the very beginning. So that's another bucket. Those are other monies that is basically sitting there that you didn't have to touch. So, you know, obviously with step one, we accomplished that goal with the IRA number one. Step two, we accomplished that goal with a combination of the savings checking and IRA number two. And now step three, these are the fun monies. These are what you could try to grow and make sure that you're leveraging the best possible allocations. And this is where rather than leaving the 401k account where we know with that bucket, contributions and rate of return, even if you have five years left for retirement, but they're eligible, you're eligible to roll over these 401k monies, well, roll over this dollar amount, place that over into the best customized allocation for a growth strategy into IRA number three, and then still contribute to a 401k account for those next five years. Because now that's just an additional ancillary bucket that, that, that's growing within that account. When you go and you do the rollover, you don't miss any matching money. So that's, that's, once again, that large misconception. So let's say if you had $380,000 in this example, you rolled that over to the 401k, and now you're starting the 401k from scratch again, 
it doesn't matter if you're still making a hundred thousand dollars and you're putting five percent of your salary you're still adding contributions of five thousand dollars and the company is giving you a match of five thousand dollars to go in there or let's say you know they were matching you three percent and you put five thousand dollars they'll only be adding three thousand dollars in there the dollar amount that's in here whether it was three hundred eighty thousand dollars or if it was zero dollars to start that that's not going to affect the match. The match is only what you're contributing into that account. So I want you to be mindful of that. But you know, with this, you could go and create a safe accumulation strategy on this growth side with this 401k that you rolled over to IRA number three. You could be a little bit more aggressive. You still have the monies that you're growing on the Roth IRA with the thousands of different combinations that you could customize. You still have the monies that you're growing with the non-qualified brokerage account. So you know, in this you know simplistic scenario, obviously you could see things that are a little bit more generalized or a little bit more complicated. It really goes by a case by case basis. But what we did was we used the smallest amount of dollars and only as much as necessary to go through three, these three steps to provide this you know, fake individual a, um, a retirement confidence. This person does not have to worry about their, their, you know, their expenses. They don't have to worry about downward market losses while pulling monies out of accounts and paying advisory fees and different things like that, that could ultimately hinder their account and, you know, leave that big question mark on whether or not they'll retire if a couple of bad market hiccups do occur. You know, this is preserving their accounts. It's making sure they have safety nets and it's taking, you know, uh, one or two 401k accounts and, and, and rolling them over into customized IRA accounts, you know, specific for the need. So kind of think of IRAs when you customize them, think about it like the 30,000 foot view, like a large puzzle piece. So you have one piece of the puzzle, one strategy. If you're trying to create an income, uh, you're trying to create an income stream, create the best income related strategy or off of a portion, off of a slice of that pie. Same thing with emergency. Don't try to go and create an income strategy for an emergency related need, just like you don't want to create an emergency related strategy for an income related need. And then that also works in tandem with the growth. You know, you don't want to have a jack of all trades type account that says, yes, I hope it's going to grow in the market. I hope I can pull monies out. You know, try to maximize. If you don't have to touch the growth related monies, you need that to grow, grow, grow. And anytime that you have a good year, you could take that, you know, extra money and, you know, and, and, and utilize an extra trip for you and your spouse to go on. Whatever that case might be, um, you know, this is where you could really leverage that ancillary bucket, that growth related bucket. And, you know, this is the, the, the main premise. It's not just to say, hey, go into, you know, a specific product. It's saying, make sure that you're covering your bases. The income is maximized. The emergency is maximized. The growth is maximized. So you're looking at the overall pie, the overall, you know, uh, puzzle pieces to make sure that it's, you know, the 30,000 foot view is, is aggregated properly. So I hope that all this makes sense. Um, you know, please let me know your thoughts. Um, please let me know, you know, if you want to speak with, uh, with you know, either myself or one of the members of my team uh, to discuss whether, you know, this might make sense for your specific situation or just kind of have, you know, a general idea. If you start nearing retirement, if you have an old 401k account and you're not sure whether or not to roll it over into an IRA, how exactly that whole process works. You know, feel free to give us a call. Just make sure to reference this video. Uh, give us a call at 1-800-566-1002. Actually, a much easier process to set an appointment with us and also would be best for your schedule. And you'll have the link, the little URL in the um, in the description of this video. But it's afasifinancial.com or you can type in retiresharp.com and it'll bring you to the same place. And you're going to see this little uh, this little thing, that this little icon that pops up. It says book your strategy session. So you can schedule an appointment directly. Uh, you could obviously put a note, whatever time is best for you. You could check out all of our different services that we offer um, and then, uh, you know, you could obviously ask to speak directly to me or uh, it could be put over to a different advisor. But, um, you know, at the end of the day, I enjoy creating this content for individuals. I think that there's a lot of bullshit out there. Excuse my language. Um, but, you know, strategies that just try to say, OK, leave your money, invest in the market, leave your money here or go put your money all the way into an annuity. And I, I just I think that by basically, you know, crawling before you walk, walking before you run, becoming educated and becoming part of the process, that's the most important thing, you know, for that retirement success and for you to really understand the math and science involved, you know, behind the things. But, uh, you know, uh, I, I hope you found value in this video. Please feel free to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Retire Sharp, so you can have access to the most updated videos. And also, one of the new things that we created is um, is going to be the Retire Sharp podcast that will be coming out. And you'll be seeing those videos uh, being uh, displayed off of the, our YouTube channel as well. So um, be sure to look out for that. It's going to be Retire Sharp or Real Talk with Retire Sharp is the name of the podcast. 
And, uh, you know, we will look forward to helping you out the best we can. Thank you so much, guys, and uh, have a great rest of your day.